This After Effects tutorial is sponsored by Point5. Hey everyone, what's up? I am Nikhil from Dopemotions.com and welcome back to this brand new After Effects tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to share with you 10 super useful effects inside of After Effects and we will also see how to use them and create some really interesting looking looks and animation. So with that said, let's jump straight into After Effects and get started. Alright guys, so here we are in After Effects and the first effect that I want to talk about is called Shift Channel. So here I have a very simple animation of a shape and some text animating. And now I want to add a nice RGB effect on this. So Shift Channel exactly helps us to do that. So to use this effect, I'm going to select the layer, go into Effects and Preset and search for Shift Channels. Apply this. Now I'm going to turn the green and the blue channel to full off, just keeping on the red channel and change the blending mode of this to screen. Then duplicate this, hit Ctrl D, select the second layer, turn off the red and turn on the green channel. Duplicate this one more time, select this, turn off the green channel and turn on the blue channel. All right, nothing happens, but now if I displace the layers by just one frame you can see we have this very nice and you know dynamic looking rgb effect which makes the complete animation look even more cooler and that really high tech vibes to any kind of animation basically this is a very simple example but you can add this technique on various complex animation and i have already shared this technique in number of different tutorials so it's super useful the next effect that I have for you is called the stroke effect. So here I have a simple text layer. So what I'm going to do is first of all, select the layer, right click and go into create, create mask from text. All right. Go into effects and preset and search for stroke, which is an inbuilt effect in After Effects. Double click to apply that. And now I'm going to tick on the small button that says all mask. So turn that on and let's set the paint style to on transparent. And boom, here we have some nice strokes on our text. Now you can play around with the brush size. You can keep it the way you want. You can even change the color. So let's say if I want to pick a really nice color, I can do that. I can adjust the brush hardness, opacity and start offset. So we can create a really nice and simple animation. So let's go at the very start, create a keyframe on the end property. I'll go somewhere around there, set this to 100 and boom. There we have a very nice and simple write on effect, which can be super useful. And you can even take this one step forward. So let me show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is go right over here, maybe. Okay. Create a keyframe on the start property. I'm going to hit U. Let's go right over here and set this to 100. So now we have something like this. All right. Let's duplicate this. Hit Control D. And then I'm going to move this layer a bit forward in time. Let's select this and I'm going to make this white or let's go with the blue color so now we have two different right on effects which looks pretty cool let's duplicate this one more time hit ctrl d and then i'm going to pull this forward in time and set this to white and get rid of hit u and get rid of the start animation and now if i preview this you can see we have this very cool right on effect using some very sim using a very simple stroke effect super super easy and cool The next effect that I have for you is called the echo effect, which is one of the most popular effect inside of After Effects. So here I have a very simple animation of tracing and scale animated. On this, I'm going to select the text layer, go into effects and preset and search for echo effect. Double click to apply that and right off the bat, you can see we get this kind of an echo look. So we can increase the number of echoes so I can go really high. So let's set this to something like 40. I can bring down the echo time. So let's set this to minus 0.01. So I'm going to bring down the decay and this is going to give us a very nice look. As you can see, let's set this to somewhere around 0.9 or something. And now if I preview this, you can see we get this very nice trail effect. 
and I think it looks super cool. It completely depends on the type of animation that you have. The more complex animation you have, the more cool it's gonna look. So yeah, I think it is looking pretty dope and this is a very amazing effect and you can use it on a number of different scenarios. Now before I proceed further with this tutorial, I just want to take a minute and talk about today's sponsor Point5. Point5 is the world's largest stock video marketplace with over 30 million clips to choose from. This includes the highest standard of royalty free premium video clips which are available to use straight away in your projects. In addition to videos, Point5 also has a huge selection of music, sound effects, photos, graphics, after effects templates and 3D models. Pond5 offers tailored solutions to suit the individual needs of every creator. The choices are quite endless. If you want just an item or two, you can purchase with pay per item pricing or stock up on a credit pack to get the most bang for your buck. If you have more consistent content needs, then Pond5 has a membership offering as well. Everything they sell comes with the best price guarantee. To get started, you can create a free account today, choose from a large library of content including thousands of free assets and start creating. So you can click the link in the video description to get a flat 20% off on any of these options today. The next effect that I have for you is called the 4 color gradient. So I'm going to go into effects and presets, search for 4 color gradient, apply this and I'm gonna drag the gradient points like so. And let's add some nice color to this. I'm going to make this one like red, make this one a nice yellow, um, make this one a nice blue and this one a nice purple. All right. Now in itself, it's a pretty cool effect, but to make it look even more cooler, you can add some nice glow to this. So I can go into effects and preset, search for glow, double click to apply that. And make sure to hold alt and switch to 32 bits per channel. This is going to help us get some very nice and deep glows. I'm going to increase the radius the way I want and bring down the glow intensity just to make it look right and bring that down a little bit. This is just a basic example of how you can use this four color gradient. You can use this in a number of different scenarios. So it can be a really cool combination of four color gradient and some nice glows. The next effect that I have for you is the drop shadow, but I don't really prefer using the drop shadow effect that we get in the effects and preset panel. Rather, I like to right click the layer, go into layer styles and use this drop shadow instead. Now you may ask, what is the difference? So let's also add the drop shadow from the fix and preset panel. All right. And now if I see the properties, you can see we have more, much more values here. I'm going to reset this. Now you can see we have many different values here to control the drop shadow in compare with the drop shadow effect that we get. So I'm going to delete that. And the main value that I care about here is the noise because what this does is it helps us to add a noise to the shadow and it looks super cool. So let's pick the background color itself. Let's increase the opacity all the way up to hundred and also increase the distance and then increase the size. So as I increase the size and also let's, you know, change the color of this. Just, let's just pick whip from the background so you can see the drop shadow more properly. You can see we get this very subtle noise, which looks, you know, personally, I like this kind of look. And sometimes it can be your kind of style that you want to go with for your animation. Or if you want to keep it very subtle, just to avoid the color bendings or compression, then you can keep it at 5%. And you know, overall, I think it looks pretty damn cool. I can let's um, increase the angle, you know, get a really cool look, I think. Pretty nice. So always, always use the layer styles drop shadow, not the default one. And not the and not the one from the effects panel the next effect that i have for you is called optics compensation so let's say i have an animation here on this effect i'm gonna apply the optics compensation and this effect helps us to achieve this kind of distortion on the edges which makes the complete look even more interesting so if i preview this you can see 
we can also animate this to get this it's a very useful effect when you are creating something uh, that you know kind of a VR look you can even reverse this and get kind of an old TV style look which is pretty cool it can also be a helmet of a space guy I don't know you know the possibilities are quite endless here and you can even play around with this setting that is the view center and get a really interesting look pretty cool effect and definitely should give it a try the next effect that I have for you is called the displacement map effect. Now, if I directly apply this effect on any layer, so let's say I have a text here, I'm going to add a displacement uh, map. It's not going to do much, you know, it's going to be very weird and probably not usable. But if you create a map for this effect, it can look super cool. So let's go ahead and create a new composition. I'm going to call this map and let's hit control Y to create a new solid hit. OK, and on this, I will be using another effect called fractal noise, which is a very, very awesome effect. And using this effect, you can create a number of different things. So let's set this to block for now and bring down the complexity like that. Let's increase the contrast a little bit going to transform unlink this and I'm going to just make it look a bit more complex like so. All right. And now if I go back right here, let's drag the map composition in hide that and in the displacement effect, select the map. And now if I displace this, you can see we get this cool glitchy look and it looks super cool basically. So I can really animate this, you know, I can even duplicate this. So hit control D to duplicate it. I can change the position of this, you know, and what I can do here is create keyframes on this. Hit U so we can see only the keyframes go to around one second and set them back to zero. And let's see what we get. Select the keyframes and let's add a simple animation and boom just using the simple technique you can create this cool and complex displacement and you can anytime jump into the map change the way it looks i can maybe make this longer like that you know it's gonna look super duper cool so you can create many different glitch effects using this particular technique the next effect that I have for you is a pretty simple one. So you gotta have a simple paper texture and on this I want to add a nice grid effect. So to do that I can hit control Y to create a new solid and then on this I'm going to add the grid effect. Double click to apply that. Okay, let's make this black. And then I'm going to switch the size from to with slider. Let's increase this like so you can play around with the border size you know keep it very intense or keep it very light like around two should be fine and then i what and then what i like to do is hit control shift c to pre-compose it hit okay and on this i'm going to use the displacement map effect again and this time i'm gonna select the paper texture and let's increase the displacement a bit like so and hit t to bring down the opacity like that and now we have a very nice textured grid and you know it can be a really interesting background you can play around with different uh stuff like i can go here i can invert the grid and let's see what we get with this you know pretty weird stuff but it can be super super useful the next effect that i have for you is called turbulence displays but i like to use this effect with a very interesting effect called venetial blinds i used to use this effect a lot when i was learning after effects this is a very cool effect so i can create a you know a design like that let's increase this then then search for turbulence displays let's hit double click to apply that and you can get some really interesting look you can also animate the evolution or you can, what you can do is let's set this to somewhere around like that. Increase the complexity really high like this. 
and you know just play around with stuff so i can increase this and get a really weird kind of a texture which can look cool in some cases it's all about playing around with this effect and you know trying to come up with a different look really cool kind of a brush stroke effect which looks pretty cool so this is just a simple example of how you can combine these two effects and you know play around with this and come up with some really cool animation you can even create these kind of transition by the way which is really nice you know for one to the second scene pretty cool and finally the last effect that i have for you is called the wave warp and this is a, again a pretty cool effect and if i apply this on a text and increase the wave width i can also change the direction and now if i preview this you can see we get a really nice wavy text which looks pretty awesome right and now you may get some jittery edges so to fix this obviously you can change this to high but what one more thing that you can do here is create a new adjustment layer go into effects and preset search for fast blur fast box blur set the iteration to one and increase the blur radius to somewhere around 50 and then hit T and bring down the opacity to around 12 or 15 should be good. And this is going to help us to fix all the jittery edges. You can play around with the opacity depending on the look that you want. But around 10 to 15 seems to be a very good number. And you can obviously play around with a number of different things. So you can change the wave type from, you know, sine to square. Get a really different look. And, you know, play around with this and obviously have fun with this particular effect because it's super cool and you can create some very very nice uh, animations using this so that is a wrap for today guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did make sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon so you always get notified whenever i post a new video you can also follow me on instagram at dope.motion and if you're feeling generous please do support us on patreon all the links are in the description below. With that said, I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, take care and always stay raw, stay creative. Peace out.